you have been a pioneer in aging for uh, a number of years. Actually, when I got started in regenerative medicine about 10 years ago, uh, I saw a, a lot of your talks uh, about aging, and that was uh, totally fascinating to me. Um, so you were definitely inspirational at that time. So your main area is is really regarding how to stop aging. And, and my, I guess my first question is, how are we doing with that? How's that coming along? <laughs> well, first of all, let me slightly be careful with the terminology because okay. so, many, so many of the words and phrases that people use in this space have been overloaded with connotations and so on. So I don't really like to say that the goal is to stop aging. Because okay. aging is a side effect of being alive. In other words, you get the um, accumulation of various types of molecular and cellular damage in the body as a, an intrinsic, inextricable consequence of the network of processes that the body has to do to keep us alive from one day to the next. The thing that we have the chance to do is to repair those various things, to, to, to restore the structure and composition of the body at the microscopic level to something like how it was at an earlier age. So essentially repairing damage, doing preventative maintenance. And the idea there is that the body works perfectly well if it has a certain amount of this damage carrying around. It's just that there's a threshold level beyond which the body works less well. And that's why we get sick late in life. So this is really what it's about. It's not really stopping aging. It's doing periodic, comprehensive, preventative maintenance to essentially um, uh, be a circuit breaker of aging. So, so yeah. How, so coming back to the question, how is it going? Well, yeah, how is it going? Are we, are we actually accomplishing this goal or are, are you? So the best way to answer that is to start from the fact that any preventative maintenance approach to extend the longevity of any machine, even a simple machine like a car beyond its warranty period, has to be a divide and conquer approach. It has to be a business of identifying all of the various types of damage that can eventually cause the machine to stop working and repairing them all. So you don't have to repair any of them perfectly because of what I said about this threshold, but you have to repair them all reasonably well. So how's that going well? Not too bad. It's, um, you know, the way that I've decided to um, essentially uh, classify these types of damage is according to the ways in which we might go about doing the damage repair. And some of those ways are definitely further along than others. They were further along than others, even at the beginning, 20 years ago, when I first conceived of this approach. Um, but the good news is that they're all going pretty well. So the ones that were the hardest back then are still probably the hardest, the ones that have the most work to do, but they're a hell of a lot further ahead than they were. And things are accelerating as we get every incremental little bit of proof of concept gets people a little bit more enthusiastic and um, you know, confident that we might actually be able to do this. And so that means that there's more money available and things go faster as a result. So I'm pretty happy.